What's up guys, welcome back to our channel. Stop number two in Ohio. We went earlier, we checked out this 400 gallon tank. You guys seen the video, spectacular, one of the best tanks I've ever seen. However, today we're coming to stop number two. I'm not gonna tell you anything, I'm gonna let you guys see the rest. Follow me along, let's go do this. All right guys, we just made it here. We're here with Matt. It's up, great man? to see you. Thank you for having us over, man. Anyhow guys, don't forget throughout this video we're gonna hide an egg of Casper somewhere, I can't tell you where. <laughs> First one to find us, send us at the end. We'll be glad to send you a swag pack with a t-shirt and some stickers right to your door. Find it. We found this tank on Instagram. I actually <laughs> met him a few weeks ago. He was in Arifa Palooza, Orlando. We met briefly. It was just out of luck that we were coming here to Ohio. Here we are. Beautiful tank for what I can see so far. So I'm gonna be asking you a bunch of questions. So. Let me start with what size is this tank? So this is a uh, crystal line reef aquarium from Planet Aquariums. It's okay. a 180 gallon tank, 72 by 24 by 21. It is gorgeous, man. I'm super, super impressed. How long has this tank been running for? So this tank is just shy of two years in July. That's it? That's it. It looks beautiful. It looks more mature than that, especially the way the mushrooms are spreading. Yeah, well, I actually brought some of the old, uh, well, the mushrooms you see here from my previous tank, which I've been aquaculturing for years. Most of the rock in this tank was dry rock. I cycled it and then brought a little bit of live rock from my previous tank into this, this aquarium. So it took a little bit of time when you started with most of it dry and you brought a little bit of rock? It took uh, quite a bit of time, actually. At one point, I actually... <laughs> were frustrated a little bit, I right? was frustrated. And I talked to one of my buddies uh, at my local fish store, Ryan, and yeah. uh, he was like, you got to get the uh, aquarium dirtier. So believe it or not, I actually took a bag of raw shrimp and just dumped it in after about 45 days of failing at cycling it. Had to get the tank dirtier, and that, you know, helped. Uh, about 30 days later, the whole tank was, tank was cycled, and... It was something maybe I don't recommend, but no. uh, <laughs> hey, why do you say that? So I don't know if you've been watching our YouTube channel, but I started a tank on my office, an 80-gallon tank, about nine months ago. I struggled for the first four or five months, like you won't believe it. I started completely dry. I mean, I'm telling you, that I use a, a calcium reactor media, brand new. Every single piece of rock was dry, completely dry. Yeah. In the first six months, I was getting frustrated too. I was in the same boat. Now it's nine months. It's doing a lot better, so... That's what I was asking, that it's not an easy task to start with the tank dry. Having a smaller tank makes for an easier cycle. A yes. lot more water. It's easier to manage the water quality, but I will say it's a lot harder to cycle. So for flow, I see you got two MP60s? That's what I have. How high do you have them? Yeah, they're probably running about 55-60%, um, and they're on a typical slave mode right now. I love them. They're one of my favorite. I don't see a lot of people using the sponges. Why are you using them? So when I have them off, I like a deep sand bed. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, for a main display tank, I think a sand bed is important. Uh, for frag tanks and other tanks, I do a bare bottom like my 30-gallon uh, okay. over here. But one thing I notice is when you take that off, the sand really kicks up and it moves all over the tank because the, the current is so strong. So, so mainly you did it for the sand? Yeah, just to keep the control uh, of the sand, yes. That's cool. And uh, for fish, what do you have? I see a blonde naso, you got a purple tang. Yeah, uh, look at the beautiful blonde naso. That's it's actually- gorgeous, he's he, super happy. Yeah, he's very happy. He's the leader of the tank, that's he's Bruce. Hello, my name is Bruce. Hello, Hi, Bruce. Uh, <laughs> my it's not the purple tang, huh? No, actually the purple tang and the yellow tangs are all pretty uh, in unison with each other. Bruce kind of runs the pack and uh, there's also a tamini tang in here and a uh, blue coal, uh, blue eyed coal tang. So one thing I gotta ask, I see you got three clowns in there, are they fighting? So that's funny you mentioned that, no, but when I first put the bonded pair in, uh, the black and white ones, I have a frostbite, I've had him for years, and actually one of the other clowns took to him. What? Uh, and, and they started pairing up, but then they all kind of split off, and there's a little guy in here that they pick on a little bit. The big problem I have with the clowns is not aggression towards each other, or if, even if I put my hand in the tank, it's them, especially the frostbite, uh, being inside the corals, like the ganis and the mushrooms, and treating it like an rain. anemone. Does that affect the goniopores? Does he, does, he does he host them? He tries to. I, <laughs> I tried my best to make him. Uh, you like, get out of there. Yeah, I literally. I want him nice and open. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm constantly getting them out of there. I, I, any of my corals, for that matter. I see the three clowns. You got some green crumbs, leperas. What is that, an A-line ras over there? Yes, so we have a melanaris ras. Uh, what is that one? That's a melanaris. Okay. 
He looks like an A from here, like a pretty big boy. Yeah, he's a beautiful. I have two Rasses in here, and then we have a school of pajama cardinals. There's I five. I see a few of them back yeah. there. Yeah, once in a while I you see catch a them schooling. Too. Couple damsels, you know. Every every fish has a, a role and a job. Uh, you know, tangs eat the algae. The damsels help keep flatworms if they pop up under control. Same with the wrasses. So I see you got a lot of acropora here on the right side. You got mainly euphilia in the middle. You got the little goniopora island, which is my favorite, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a showstopper. Yes. Tell me about some of those gonies, man. I love the different types that you have. It's like your little collection in there. Yeah, so, you know, I kind of got a fascination with them a long time ago. Because uh, when you first get in the hobby, we don't know what you're doing. It's pretty easy to kill coral. And Ghani's were one that I was exceptionally good at it at first. <laughs> um, but uh, what I've been doing over the years is kind of collecting and building out an island. I have probably about 13 different Ghani's right now. Um, I love to aquaculture them as well. Um, one of my favorites would have to be the glitter Ghani. Um, that That's glitter, cool. I like it how the green and the purple when you see the little lines in there. It's beautiful. But what's unique about them is I've killed them twice, basically. Oh, why? Why? Uh, the Lobo over here was once upon a time in the 30 gallon, you see. Okay. And it is a very aggressive coral, and uh, which, you know, yeah, I'm not telling no, you Yeah, I feel no joke. And uh, it stretched out and it grabbed onto my Ghani and it killed basically every bit of, uh, of it two or three polyps were left and uh, it took over a year to nurse it back to health and, and that's what you see today after probably two and a half years of wow. really TLC. So this thing is pretty overgrown for the amount of time it's been set up. There's definitely a coral warfare starting to happen in <laughs> a lot of places. What's your plan next if this continues to grow and grow and grow? Well I do really enjoy fragging the corals. One of my favorite things to do. Um, you know you know, this dreams of maybe another tank, right? Mm -hmm. Right, honey? Um, you know, <laughs> always in my future. But, you know, I try to keep the corals... Uh, Out of decent uh, size, you try to maintain yeah, them without we try going to, crazy. Yeah, we try to trim them, keep them clean, but it's difficult, especially with the LPS. You know, they get a little crazy. You know, my gold torch, I'm literally cutting that thing every four months, it feels like, and it's just, it comes back more bold and healthy every time. And, uh, you know, I guess it's a it's a, a good problem to have, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so a couple of other questions I have. I see you're using um, radio lights. What are these, Gen 6? These are Gen 5. Gen 5? How long have you been running them for? So I've been through pretty much every Radeon generation. I, I, I love the Radeon lights. You know, so you've been through the building. 1 and 2? I've been through the 2s. I got 2s, 3s, I hated fours. them at the beginning. The 3s were OK. The 4s were really good. The fives were good, the six is good, but like the this one and two, I, I hate to say it, but I hated it. I remember back in the days we switched all of our T5s and metal highlights for the Gen 1s, mm -hmm. radiums, and Switch we lost the, we switched back, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I give that a lot to, I don't think it was the, the light, the lighting wasn't the problem, everyone was new to LEDs, and the first thing that everyone automatically did was to bump the lights high and make them blue. So the cores weren't ready for the spectrum, the technology wasn't there, the research wasn't there, and instead of keep on trying different things, what was the easiest thing to do? Go back to what you, you go know. Go back to what you know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about, about those mushrooms. I love them. What do you call them? Yeah, so that's a mushroom that I've been aquaculturing for a decade. I call them radioactive oranges. They are probably the brightest discoma mushroom I've ever seen. Um, and white light, blue light, you can see it from across the room. And it develops with maturity the green the splotches green. you see in it. That's which what is I'm liking. I love the wild, green splotches. Right? I love them. I love them. It takes quite a while. It takes at least a year or more, sometimes two, for them to develop that color. Like I said, I just love it when I see different colors. I love this little fungia dicers. Yeah. I'm not sure I want to say it's a fungia. I love the mushrooms here. I mean, I love the fabia slash micromusa that I call from, uh, from Australia. The mushrooms you got here, all your little uh, bounce mushrooms. Oh. So I see some of these chalices right here. I see the watermelon chalice. It's like a rainbow chalice with two different colors. Is that what it is? Yeah, Look you know. At this. I just realized it's not, it's not a regular rainbow. Ch it's not a watermelon, but it's like a mm -hmm. rainbow now that I got closer to it. It looks like a watermelon that is split into two different colors, like a two-face. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the oldest one of the bunch. Uh, the Raja is obviously yeah, the oldest. Yeah, that thing grows and grows. It, it's a weed if it gets going. So what are you dosing on this thing? 
for, for calcium, so, alkalinity, magnesium. Yeah, so I do two part. Uh, I used to dose magnesium, but okay. I see, I just can eyeball it now. Okay. Um, so I do that kind of by freehand. Um, what are you dosing, A and B? So I'm dosing B ionic. Okay. Um, I dose about 66 milliliters of each per day. Uh, and I, I love use. Bionic. Yeah, I it's, love it's it. the best. And I use the Neptone DOS uh, to facilitate that through a nine hour period. So what do you feed? So I feed uh, PE mysis. Okay. I do two cubes and I do uh, the brine as well. And then I will do some pods from Reap Nutrition. Okay. We'll mix a little of that in there. And then also some Fido. Okay. How about water changes? How often do you do those? So that's something I'm pretty religious about. Um, I'm very into making sure the water quality is dialed in. Okay. I do them every two weeks. Okay. Every two weeks. I do that every Sunday. It's marked on the calendar. <laughs> and. Uh, Make sure that the water um, that we're creating to mix with the salt. What brand of salt are you using? So we're using the Black Bucket Red Sea Pro. Coral Funny, Pro. it came from the, the other guy, which is two hours from here. It's got to be like a local thing. He's using the same salt and the same A&B that you're using. Yeah, well, you know. It, it becomes influential when you're in the area. All of you guys hang out together. We you start guys, talking, you right? Guys, yeah, you guys go to the same fish store, same frack swap. <laughs> it's and that's so how true. style is born, you know? So the style it around is. here, I guess, is Red Sea and Bionic A&B. Uh, uh, Great products, by the way. Look how clean this is, man. He's meticulous, huh? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I Let can't sit still. He says he needs lunch in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> after dinner. There you go. <laughs> man, how often you clean this sump? I gotta ask. So, you know, I probably clean it monthly. Um, I, I, if you notice, I raised it up a little bit, so it's a little bit easier to access. It's not saying much, but okay. I had limited room with the Regal 200 I'm running for my skimmer. Okay. Um, and you don't see any refugium, which is something that I'm going to be building here in the future, over here. You feel like you need a refugium? Uh, yes. Uh, my nitrates run a little high. I run about 11. I'm That's used to good. running, eh, I mean. I like to keep them between 5 and 20. It's, in my opinion, it's a little bit high for my taste. I like to have it. What do you notice that happens when you get high like that? My colors just seem to be getting green. And if you notice my acros, you know, I'm used to getting very deep colors. My par I've tested, it's a lot lower than my previous tanks. Gotcha. But my nitrates are about 10 times what my old tank was. That was about one. <laughs> and so, you know, it's a little bit of a difference. Um, I feel like a refugium that I had pa back then is necessary for this. And gotcha. it's something I like Funny to do. Funny you say as well. that. I, I, I feel the opposite. I feel like when I get nitrous a little higher, I see more coloration. Obviously, yeah. those are a number, but I see you got an Apex controller here. You say you're doing the A and B, mm -hmm. then you got to try it in uh, controlling your alkalinity. Yep. Then you got to dose, you say, in those, those in your A and B. Yep. What else are you doing with the controller? So the controller is running a lot of the outlets, you know, things that I can flip on and off very quickly. You know, I have my water chain station that I'm using daily to top off the water. Um, so, you know, I like to use the Apex to just quickly be able to turn something on, turn something off. Um, set the temperature. I really like the ability to be alerted. You know, I travel quite a bit for work, okay. and you'll see that I got a lot of things buzzing or, yeah. or making noises all the time because I believe redundancy is very yeah. important. Um, you know, all this can disappear in just a couple hours yeah. if you don't have plan and precautions in place. And and the Apex is one of those things that helped me do that. Got you. I love it. I love it. I love it. What about return pump? What do you have? So I love Ecotech. You'll, you'll notice the theme, that Ecotech and Neptune are really yes. my go-tos. So you're happy they join forces together. Right? I do. I really love it that uh, they're all under one um, uh, umbrella. So the 30 gallon, which is uh, a very unique tank, tank because all the rock in here was kind of from my old tank that I had it for eight years. And yeah. you know, you can't really get rid of live rock like that. So he's a reef junkie. I'm a reef junkie, you know, I save everything. So we built this system with just kind of leftover everything, you know, a, a leftover skimmer, leftover pump, PVC from old tank builds. Just Couldn't chopping let it, it go, up. Huh? Couldn't let it go. Had an extra light, threw it up. And you know, over time, I don't know how long we've had it up, maybe a year. I just put stuff in there and it just keeps growing. And I don't do water changes on it. I don't oh. dose. Uh, well, I do a two-week water change. I take that back. I do not dose anything to this tank. Okay. Um, I just kind of let it go. It's more of like an experiment. At the same time, it's a beautiful tank. And I, I have a little bit going on all over the place. It's very mixed. I have a lot of softies. I have a lot of zoas. Um, you know, most people know me on Instagram because of the zoanthids or the mushrooms. That's oh, where, yeah? where it kind of started from. Okay. Um, and so it's an obsession you can't get rid of. But it's, it's got a lot going on in there, right? You see some SPS, some Monty, some mushrooms, some softies. I love softies. that Joe Breaker you got there. It's gorgeous. Yeah, that thing is pretty. I, uh, I love that thing. It's, it's newer to the tank. It's getting health, uh, half, happy and healthy. 
Uh, and then, of course, my mangroves. Uh, I have so an obsession with So I wanted to ask you about that. Did we, did we inspire you at all with our mangroves? So I have to say the lagoon tank is something on my bucket list, right? Okay. Um, but what yes. What do you see in person? Uh, trust me, I've, I've, <laughs> I've been waiting for it. Um, it is something that I plan on doing on next to this tank okay. as a lagoon. You know, so I got the mangrove uh, at Reefer Palooza in Orlando, and I got it for um, two little fishes. From Julian. Uh, I couldn't pass it up, so thank you for it. I got it home. We flew it on the plane. First time I took a plane through TSA or a plant through yeah. TSA, it worked out well. But the pl the goal is to take that one, seed it, get it to wrap to a rock, and put it in the lagoon tank. So Julian, if you're watching, your mangroves are making it all over the place. It's contagious. <laughs> Keep on growing them, please. One thing people don't know: when you first put a mangrove in your tank, they're hard to get them to take off. Yeah, it's very right. Hard. It's not an easy it's thing, but for some reason, once they take off, it's easy. One thing I'm gonna um, tell you to look for. There's this little bugs that they will sneak in here, they okay. come on fruits. Scale. What are they called? Scale. They're called skill. That, that scale. is this little white bugs. Okay. So what I want you to do is, once a week, spray a little fresh water and wipe them down with a little towel. Okay, and wipe <laughs> them down. So why do you keep the mushrooms like that boxed in a box? What's the reason for it? So, you know, a lot. I, I sell a lot of coral and, you know, Mushrooms are very tricky, right? Okay. They can get up, they can walk away, you yeah. can't glue them. So I, I, I got these custom... So they're ready to go like that. Yeah, so I like to take the mushrooms, cut them, and put them in a mushroom box so they you know, put their foot down. And you, they're on a ceramic plug and someone else can enjoy it and propagate cool. it. That's a good idea. I like it. Because a lot of times, don't you, I hate when I buy a mushroom. That's the worst. And it starts detaching <laughs> and you're like, this is no good. Now you have to figure out how to get them in a comfortable spot with no flow, hoping, hoping they attach again. And it takes months. It's not easy, right? you know? It takes months. Hi, Matt. Thank you for inviting us over. Thanks for ha uh, coming. I am so impressed with the tank, you know? Hopefully next time we're in Ohio, I'd love to come back and visit it again. If hopefully you come in July to our store and we get to hang out, I get to show you the Pentagon and all the goodies. Oh, you can count on it. I can't wait to come down and check it out. It's yeah. Been a pleasure. Thank you again, man. On the meantime, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. Leave some comments below. We'll see you guys soon.